Hi everyone, I am Nicole van der Hoeve. I am a developer advocate and I also sometimes write stuff and make videos on YouTube about min-maxing my life, including digital tools like Obsidian. I live right now in Maastricht in the Netherlands and today I'm going to talk about how you should use it or lose it what to do with all of those notes that we probably already have if we're if you're here at this conference i'm going to leave some time for questions at the end keep that in mind as we go also i will be sharing the slides and also every plugin that i mention about obsidian at the end of the presentation so stay tuned for that first i'm going to talk a little bit more about the theory that i like that I live by when taking and using my notes. And then after that, in the last three topics, I'm going to be mostly sharing with you my real main Obsidian Vault. I'm going to be talking about how I identify topics to create content about, the plugins that I use to move work from conceptual to done, and then also how to how I weave that content back into my notes. So this is going to be all about how to make your notes actually useful. But first, let's talk about why they might not already be useful. This is my problem. More specifically, this is a snapshot of my obsidian graph, at least up to a few days ago. The yellow parts are the ones that represent um, role-playing games, notes on sessions and stuff of role-playing games that I play. Uh, the cyan, the bits of cyan that are spread out here, are other people's words that I've highlighted and imported into my own vault, and pink is everything else. So as you can see, I've got quite a few notes here, and that all takes time and effort. And the last thing that I want is for all of this to be just an exercise in how to hoard information. I, I don't want to just look at these graphs as pretty as they are. Whether I see this as, as an actual problem is dependent on what I've done with my notes. So here's a roundup of what I created in 2021. I wrote 15 blog posts about different topics. I spoke publicly at 17 conferences and meetups. This was a fun one called Schrodinger's Pokemon about chaos engineering. I produced 61 videos across multiple channels. I'm a one person team. I do everything on my own. And I made 6,393 Git commits according to GitHub. Now this is both code, but it also includes all of the notes that I have because I hold my Obsidian Vault as a repository on GitHub as well. Now I'm saying all of this to tell you that when when I hear people thinking or saying to me, oh, you know, you, you're an expert in, in so many things, um, how do you do it? I wish that were true. I'm, I'm definitely not an expert. And that's something that I want to stress. I'm just someone who's been able to find a way to use her notes effectively. But let's go over reasons we don't make stuff. These are the things that really keep us from publishing. First, I'm not an expert. Why would people listen to me? Hello, imposter syndrome. This is like a constant companion for me. But behind this panic and nagging doubt that I'm going to get found out is usually a more basic fear that I'm going to look like an idiot. I don't know when exactly we start to acquire this fear of doing anything new and yet are so forgiving when we see that in other people. And then there's a question of purpose. What is this for? What is my niche? What is the end goal for this blog or this newsletter or whatever it is? Maybe I should start by mapping out the next few years before I ever publish anything. And lastly, it's not polished enough. I'm so guilty of this. I keep thinking, oh, you know, I'll just work on it a little bit more and then share it. And maybe in a few more months, I'll be ready to actually release it. These are all perfectly natural doubts to have and ones that I still suffer from, but I came across an idea that made it all easier. And that's learning in public. 
I changed my attitude from publishing only what is finished or perfect, or at least my definition of perfect, because it never actually is, to just learning in public. I'm by no means the first person to say this. This is not my con my concept that I just came up with. It just clicked for me that there are actually a few thinkers that are saying the same thing. For example, Andy Matushak, in his public notes, talks about the value of working with a garage door up, meaning let letting people see the process of creating something rather than just the finished product. There's also business tycoon and content creator Gary Vaynerchuk, who famously says document don't create. See, he thinks that everybody has a story. And if we just thought of documenting our lives rather than trying to create something entirely new, we would get more stuff out there, reach a hell of a lot more people and also help people. Austin Kleon's book, Show Your Work, explains that publishing even unfinished work provides more professional and social proof than just a few lines on your CV. Having a history that is publicly browsable is really important even in your professional life. And Sean Wang, who is also a developer advocate like me, says that Thinking of public work as learning exhaust, meaning as byproducts of learning rather than the end goals in themselves, is one of the keys to having a successful coding career. But I think that that advice applies to a lot more industries than just software engineering. So if we go back to the previous slide, the reasons start to fall apart. For example, you don't have to be an expert I don't think that we look to the internet now and think that absolutely everything that's on there is said by experts in their field, but we can be guides and not gurus, right? Because if we're still just a few steps ahead, we're still ahead and we can help the people get to where we are. So there's still some usefulness in that. I'm going to look like an idiot. Well, probably to someone, <laughs> especially yourself. But that's how we learn. You know how they say that kids learn languages faster than adults? That's actually a myth. They learn languages faster because they don't let fear of just seeming silly hold them back. That's on us. And then what is this for? The thought that we could ever foresee where learning a topic might take us is sheer hubris. Maybe it's enough to know just the direction, if not the destination. And it's not polished enough. Why do we think that people watch reality shows? They're certainly not looking at that to just skip to the end, right? They look at it because they want, they want to see the process of it. It's why people like behind the scenes stuff. There's a genuineness to public work that is compelling. So learning in public is the way to go, but Here's a concrete example of how you can actually learn in public. Let's pretend for a moment that I'm creating a presentation and let's title that hypothetically, use it or lose it. What to do with all those notes. Now for the practical part, I'm gonna share concrete steps for how I went from a mess of notes to this presentation right here, which is gonna be a bit meta. The first step is to take notes only about the things that interest you. Because if you take notes about uninteresting things, you'll just end up thinking it's boring or tedious. So let me flip over to my obsidian vault here. I have this tag called TVZ, which is a tag that I use to mean to versetteln, meaning something that I still need to process. This could be anything, anything that hits my obsidian vault that I think I need to do something with. And the main way that I get things into my vault, other than notes that I'd create on my own, is Readwise. So basically any other article or book or podcast or video, that all goes through a service called Readwise. I have made a video about how exactly I use this. Uh, it is a plugin that's called the Readwise official plugin. I can't exactly show you the entire process here because I want to get to the other part about trying to identify which topics to talk about, but I'll show you what it looks like when it's imported. 
So let me click on this one. I am, this is a, um, this is the search in Obsidian. So I am searching for everything that has this tag, but I'm excluding certain folders, the templates folder, because I have a lot of templates for things that I import and the templates themselves don't need to be processed. And also this, this vault, which is for my role playing games. So this is what, let me close this pane down. This is an example of what it might look like when Reid Weiss puts it in my vault. This was, in this case, this was an article, there's the URL here, and I sent it to Reid Weiss and then within their product reader, which is in private beta, I'm sorry, that's why I can't show you just yet, I was able to highlight a few things and then it brought in all of my highlights. So I don't highlight everything in the article. The real article was longer than this, but you can see that there's already a tag there, TVZ. That's an indicator for myself that I need to process it. And from this part, one of the things that I picked up on was the concept of Kanban, which is a methodology. It, it is something that Toyota founded or, or created or made popular at least. And it was in the context of a production line, not even for note taking or anything, but it's been co-opted by software engineering in general. One of the cool things that I picked up here is that WIP is work in progress. Limits are important. So one of the cool things about Kanban is that you're only supposed to work on a limited amount of things at any one point, because if you have too many, then it becomes overwhelming. So I, after this is automatically pulled in by Readwise, I would then go through it, read through my highlights and start to create notes about whatever strikes me. So in this case, I made one for just Kanban in general. It's pretty short, it's just a paragraph, right? But it was enough to, to kind of have a placeholder in my notes of what, what Kanban is. Yes, ideally I would have more notes in here, but you know, not everybody has the time to do these things and I did what I could. And so that's Kanban, but let me show you, that was something that I just happened across, right? But I want to show you something a bit different. And this is a fictional book. This is all related to this presentation, by the way. So this is a book from the Sand series by Pierce Anthony that I read when I was growing up and I reread it last year. And this is a, a lot shorter. I only had three highlights in the entire book, but this one in particular stood out for me. There's a character named Crombie whose magical talent is that he can, if someone asks him, where is my heart's desire or even something very abstract like that, he can close his eyes and point in that direction of where that, that thing is. But he himself doesn't actually know where, it's just in that direction. He doesn't know, it, it, could, be, it could be just you know, a person that's standing right there, or it could be some other place that's thousands of miles beyond that person. I thought that that was interesting and I created a note called direction is more important than destination. And this was from last year as well. When I took this note, I definitely wasn't thinking about this presentation or, or productivity really, I was thinking of it more in the context of kind of having the process and not the results guide what you do. I thought of it in the context of, of creator's block. And I'll show you another example of, of an article. And by the way, the Spell for Chameleon, this was a Kindle book. On Readwise, they allow you to read a book on the Kindle, highlight on Kindle, and Readwise through the Readwise official plugin just automatically brings it into Obsidian. So, so useful. I love it so much. And I created, oops, Lightning. I have another article that I read and it was by Sly Flourish. And it's called Lightning Rods Showcase Powerful Character Abilities. Now, this is something earlier this year that I read and it is 
in the context of D&D, the game Dungeons and Dragons, the idea of a lightning rod is that it is something that is supposed to attract uh, some sort of behavior that you want. In this case, it was being able to show off cool things that each character can do. But I started thinking about it in the context of productivity and just thought in general. What are a lightning rod of thought, I thought, is kind of like a cluster of information, something that without you knowing it or thinking about it explicitly starts to attract ideas around it. And the question is, how, how do you identify those? So now we're getting into more of a direct connection between these notes and this presentation. But I definitely wasn't thinking about that when I created this note. So let's go back to the presentation because the next step is identifying these lightning rods of thought. A lightning rod is like an idea cluster and there are four ways that I thought of for identifying them. The first is bottom up, which means you start from a bunch of notes, kind of like what I showed you, and then you build on that and try to find commonalities between them. And then there is top down, there's outside in, and then there's chaos. Top down is the opposite way, outside in is being able to take feedback from the outside. And chaos is randomness. Let me show you each of these. So with the bottom up approach, one thing I really like is in Obsidian is graph view. The graph view is amazing. And that's the one, that's a picture that I was showing you earlier. So let me, there it is, um, graph view. But the problem is that when you open the graph view, it shows you the graph view for your entire vault, which is not always so useful because if you have thousands of notes like I do, then it, it quickly becomes very unwieldy to zoom in and out all the time. What I find even arguably more useful is if you pick a topic like productivity, for example, and then you hit the command pane, that's command P or control P, and then you open up the local graph. It gets opened up here. And now you see just those things that have clustered around productivity. So if you already have an idea, like I, I was given, I had this idea for the presentation and I knew that it was going to have something to do with productivity. So I went here and I looked at all of these notes to see what else is useful. What about the Pomodoro method or hill charts from the shape up methodology or like this is just a cool way of exploring things. And these filters here, by the way, this graph view is a local, is a core plugin with Obsidian. It, Obsidian natively ships with it, but you do have to enable it. You can also set the depth. So you could say right now it only it was only showing up to one link away from productivity, but now I've set it to two and there's a lot more. Now you see all those red parts? Those are actually the the notes that I've linked to, but I haven't created it. So that is a cool place to start. Like it's funny that I don't have a note for Scrum when I'm clearly linking to it from a bunch of different places. So those, those are ways to, to fill in the gaps in your knowledge vault. Well, of course, only if it's useful, right? So that's the bottom up approach. You can also try searching kind of like what I showed you um, on the left pane here. I searched for a tag here, but you could search for productivity or, or something like that. I'm a little cautious. I want to be a little cautious here about what I show you because this is my live vault. So who knows what what results will come back. But I find the search in Obsidian really quite good. Now, the top down view is the opposite with bottom up. You're not you're not really starting from an idea of what you're going to create top down is more like when you have a deadline for work or for a presentation like this the mix of, I think mo in all likelihood, you're going to have a mix of these different approaches. So 
if we had, um, like for this presentation, it's a mix of bottom up, top down, and outside in. Because even though I did already come up with some ideas because of what I already have in my vault, Nick was the one that ultimately decide. well, we decided together what we were going to do for this presentation. And so there is an element of this is what, um, this is what I'm going to talk about. I've committed to it. So there is that, that part where I started from a topic and I worked my way down. Now, outside in is a little bit different because this is not, this is about other people's feedback. So there are things that people ask me about that I'm also interested in. I have, I mentioned that I have a YouTube channel. And what I do is I actually have a list of tags here. So if I, this is the command pane again, I'm just gonna go and show my tags. Every piece of feedback that I have, I tag it with something. Let me show you that with a new note. This is feedback. So I would either say, the express the feedback in, in my own words or copy and paste somebody else's feedback, and then I would tag it. So maybe uh, I wanted to, this person left feedback on the plugin, which was Obsidian Quick Add, and that would come up here. So everything that's in this feedback tag is going to allow me to see at a quick glance what people have said about this. So I can go, I can have as many nested tags as I want really. So I could have this as well. And then that will also get created here under quick add. So I can have as I can be very granular about it. So when I was creating this presentation, let me show you that. One of the things that I did was to do research. So I had I identified some topics that I thought would be interesting. I have the local graph view here of productivity. And then I also embedded some of these tags. I knew I had two tags, NVDH feedback creating and feedback processing, and I embedded it. And this is, an, this is not a plugin, this is just basic Obsidian functionality. I just put the tags in. This is one tag, space, another, and it returns those instances. And I knew that I wanted to go over what people have previously said to me about creating and processing notes to try and address that, those questions in, in this presentation. So that is outside in. What is chaos? I like two different plugins for serendipity by chaos, I like to say. The idea is that randomly selecting a note in your vault can lead to connections that were unexpected. Sometimes we get stuck in these ruts. The first is Obsidian Smart Random Note. And you can just create, you can click on it. Um, this is Open Random Note, which will open one and in anywhere in your vault really. But what I find the most useful is the one for being able to open a random note that's just in um, that's just with this keyword. So, okay, I'm for some reason not finding it here, uh, but I can go to my command pane and then random note. So you can open it according to something that's tagged. You can open a random note that is it that you've already searched for. So anything that's in this part is going to be fair game for that. And there's opening a random note across everything. So let me do this. And it's opened up something about idempotent REST APIs, which I haven't even processed yet. But this is a cue for me to mm, kind of jog my memory and think, oh, is there any relationship between this and the presentation that I'm making? No, well, I can just do it again, right? And I've actually gone further and I've used the templates plugin, which is again, a core plugin by the way, when I mention these plugins, don't feel like you need to use them. I'm just kind of showing off what I do. And I have a daily note. And in that daily note, 
I have a section called for settle this, and I'm using a, another plugin called Obsidian Dice Roller. Let me create a new thing here. Dice Roller. Dice Roller is really for fantasy role-playing games, but that's not what I use it for. I mean, I use it for a bunch of different things. But with this syntax, if you exit out of it, you won't see anything yet, but it actually takes everything from that TVZ tag. So this means, this is really, I like this because it's in my daily note. So every day I'm presented with something different. And if I don't like that, I can just click on it and then I have something else. Like, oh, there's a, these are all things that I still need to process. And just the randomness of it makes it impossible to have preconceptions about what it's going to be or what you want to work on. If you knew what you were going to work on, then you could just work on that, right? But the randomness of it leads me to discover, prompts me to discover things that, discover connections that I hadn't considered. So these are the four different ways for being able to identify lightning rods of thought. Now, step three is actually making stuff in whatever form that takes. I don't think we need to distinguish between making blog posts or tweets. A tweet can totally be the cool thing that you're making, depending on the ideas that, that you're using. Now, to make this presentation, I already kind of showed you that task one that I did. Um, okay. So I started with this. I have a template for this that automatically gets applied, and it has a bunch of these um, parameters, which I will talk about in a second. I, when this video comes out on YouTube, I will put the, the link here. This is just an iframe, and I, I will put the correct link here for my own, for my own records. I have some resources like the slides and the speaker page in case I want to do like a promo or something. I put my abstract. I showed you the research section already. Let's collapse that. And then I, I had a rough idea of what I was going to talk about. But this note is like a placeholder for what I'm going to do. It's, it's a bit of work that I need to do. And to keep track of all of these things, I have what I call a content board. This is using a plugin called Kanban. Remember Kanban from earlier? It came into play because this is the way that I organize all the content that I'm creating. You'll see that I have a number in parentheses in each column, and that's because I've adopted the work in progress limits, and some of them are lower than others. For example, oh, I shouldn't really have this much. I think I was just messing around with this. Um, you can click, you can drag tasks. Every card, this is called a card. Every card here I, it is a piece of work, a task or presentation or code snippet or, or whatever it is. And you, I start from the, the leftmost part here, which is on deck. I try to limit this to 10 and I refill fill it during my weekly review or whenever I, I've run out of things basically. And then I move it through the process. So at some point, this note that we were looking at, this is, this is the same one that I just showed you. It was here on, on deck and I moved it according to what stage it was in. And I can also edit this card and this is how I'm getting the image in there. And this is just a way to systematize how I produce content because sometimes I forget. Like I, sometimes I want to, I'm so excited about an idea that I just want to go straight to filming and I have to look and think, oh yeah, I should probably have some, like an outline or, or something <laughs> before I actually film it. And then there's editing, and if it's a video, then I like to caption it. This is also why I have such a, a low number here. I don't, editing is, it takes up a lot of time, so I don't want to have like 10 things in here that I have to go through. And then I put it in here, I move it in here when I want to caption it, and then I schedule it. And for post publishing, 
those there are a whole bunch of ideas uh, of things that I need to do. Let's create something like let's say I'm creating a new video. I'm going to hit options, new note from card, and then command pane again, and I'm going to insert a template. So I already have a, a shortcut for it, but I, but um, let me click on that. And I know that mine has a NVDH video. So when I click on that, oops, when I click on that, it automatically fills this note according to pres according to things that I said. So I, I want to make sure there's a thumbnail, a title, hook, structure, outro, and, and that kind of thing. And I also have some pre-production and post-production tasks. And that's really useful because there's so many things here, I'm sure that I might miss some of these if I didn't have a systematic way of doing it. And I also have one, like if this had been a presentation, then it would have looked, oops, it would have looked a bit different. So it has details, abstract, structure, and then a link to the presentation itself. But, and then I would move this task um, to different columns as need be. I said that I would talk about the, the metadata Right, so let me open this. This is super nerdy, <laughs> but I thought I would mention it here as well. So there's a, an, a plugin called Fantasy Calendar that allows me to create a, a separate calendar. So this is what it's called. And each of these dots is actually something that I created. These are two videos that I created. And when I mouse over them, there's the actual video and everything that, that I did. This is a cool way to schedule content. So there's also a big calendar here for fantasy calendar. And I can see it in a monthly view. And I can also color code them by categorizing them. This is this is pretty niche, I know, but I, I find it useful. Now, when part of the part of the post publishing process is once it's out there, I like to try and tie it back into my vault. As an example, let me look at my top 10 obsidian plugins I can't do without. I made this video, it had a separate task, but then I also created a new note for it that had the video, the timestamps I used, and then the transcript in case I ever need that. But I also have this section, which has a bunch of notes that I already have or not, that I think are related to this video. Because I found myself taking my notes, creating something with it, and then that was it. But I actually could have used that those the things that I learned in the process of making the video also in my notes. So now, if you go to Obsidian Plugins, now it has a link, it has an iframe with that video as well. So I'm adding, I'm enriching the value of my notes based on what I already created. It's like tying the loop. So that was releasing the Kanban board. By the way, I did want to mention this presentation itself was made in Obsidian using the Advanced Slides plugin. Let me briefly show you that. So it is called, um, there is a Slides plugin that comes with Obsidian, but I prefer the Advanced Slides plugin because there's a, a bunch of things you can do with it, like set a theme and set a background and stuff. This is essential. This is my presentation, actually. And all that it takes is creating is having these three dashes, and it creates a different slide. So let me show you so what I like to do is I, I have, you know, my abstract there to make sure that I'm, I'm addressing the things that I said I was going to address. Or maybe I have like bullet points here. And, and then I have on the left side the actual presentation. But then on the command pane, I'm also going to show slide preview. I'll take that and I'll put it down here. And look, 
it's the actual presentation. And as I'm typing things out, then it, it also changes as well. See, this is the slide thing, right? And it changes. I can also go back and forth here. So it, it means that the presentation is just a bunch of markdown files, which is so awesome. Let me just demonstrate this for you. So I just created just now a new slide that goes before the title one at the very beginning. And that's how easy it is. I really like that I can do everything just from within Obsidian without having to open up Google Slides or something else. OK, now in software engineering, there is a concept called continuous integration or continuous deployment, and that's often abbreviated to CI CD. The main idea is that the process doesn't end when the software or the code is released. That would be not a great way to do business. It should be monitored for performance and it, feedback should be gathered from the customers, right? And then that information can be used to improve the application and the code further. So the idea is that it's a loop. It's not a procedural thing where it's just a line at the end of the line. That's it. We should look at our notes in the same way. Done shouldn't mean done forever. This concept says that you, when you get feedback about what's out there, we should let that the feedback percolate in our vaults just like any other idea. So wrap up of what we've gone over. Learning in public is one of the best and most sustainable ways to not just use your notes, but to genuinely improve yourself and learn things in the process. If we let curiosity guide our notes and take notes only on things that we're interested in, we can filter out everything that we're not excited about and also reduce some of the noise, which is so important for anyone who has limited time. Step two is being able to look for lightning rods of thought by going bottom up, top down, outside in, or using the randomness of chaos. And then we can use the Kanban system as a content production line of sorts to improve consistency and clarity and the overall quantity of the work and quality of the work that you produce. And then once we've published something, we can listen and record feedback and put it right back into our vaults to improve our understanding at a later date. And on that note, do you have any questions? <laughs> this is my, these are all of my links, my YouTube channel, my site, Twitter. This is, this might be interesting. This is a public Obsidian vault that I keep while I'm learning in public. The, you can see my notes in all their messy glory about a, vari a vari varying amount of topics. I told you I would have a link for Readwise. Readwise is the service that I used to go from articles and books and pull them into Obsidian. And on this side, these are all of the plugins that I mentioned. If you go to my site, uh, maybe like in a, in a minute or so, once I just push the commit, I, I will have my latest blog post will have a link to these slides. So you can take a screenshot now or you can have a look at the slides later. Thank you everybody for listening, but I'm happy to take some questions about my setup or, or anything else.